Hi, welcome back to Physics Teacher for part two of our projectile motion tutorial for grade 11 physics. In this one we'll be looking at final velocity because I find students really don't know what final velocity is. Final velocity really is dependent on what you're looking for. Are you looking for the maximum height? That your projectile goes to or are you looking for the velocity at impact and we're going to look over both of those situations in this video so stay tuned all right so let's start by finding maximum height of a projectile now whenever you're dealing with your equations of motion and i'm specifically referring to the ones using the y component where we have acceleration due to gravity those equations of motions are always referring to two points in our projectile's trajectory. The first point is our initial velocity, and that's usually in almost any question is considered to be where the projectile is launched from, for example, in this question right here, and final velocity. Final velocity, you can really pick any other point along the path and use that as your final velocity. Now, depending, though, which point you choose will also depend on what the other variables mean. For example, if I choose this point to be our final velocity, then when I solve for displacement in Y, I will get a positive value up to this point. That would be our displacement in Y. But if I choose down here to be my final, then my displacement in y would be from that initial position to that final position. So when we're dealing with maximum height, what we're going to do is look at this point at the peak. We're going to choose that to be our final velocity in our equation. And in our y component, that's always going to be 0. All right, so let's use this fact to create a question, and we'll find the maximum height in our questions. Let's say initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Uh, we can use an angle theta, which we will say is 10 degrees. And let's say we're starting from an initial height of 30 meters. With that, let's find maximum height. So first step, we're going to have to break our initial velocity into components. We need to find what that initial velocity in y is. So our initial velocity in y then is going to equal, since it's opposite to the angle, that's a sine. We're going to use our sine ratio. So it's going to be 15, it's our hypotenuse, times the sine of theta or the sine of 10 degrees, which gives us 2.6 meters per second. And that's going to be ups. So let's make up our positive y direction. So this will be a positive value though, because it is up. Now what else do we know in our y component? We know that the acceleration y, since up is positive, this is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then if we use our final velocity as zero, then we're choosing this point here at the maximum height, or the peak of our parabola. So then we need to solve for that displacement, this displacement here. Now we have everything except for time, so we're going to use the equation that does not have time involved, and that is vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta dy. Now vf squared is going to be zero. So rearranging we get 2a delta dy is equal to negative vi squared. And solving for delta dy, we get negative vi squared divided by, dividing both sides by 2a divided by 2a. Now if we use the values we have in this question, that is going to be negative 2.6 meters per second squared all over 2 times by gravity, which is down, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we put that into our calculator, and we'll get a displacement of 
0 0.34 meters. Now it's a positive value, so that means it's up. And so that means this displacement went up 0 0.34 meters. Now if we want to know maximum height from the ground, then we're going to have to add the height from where we started from. So our maximum height then is going to be 30.34 meters. And that's how you can find maximum height. All right, well, what if you wanted to know final velocity at impact? Well, what a lot of students do is they use their equations of motion to figure out final velocity, but you have to remember that is only our final velocity in our y direction. Now we do need to find that, so let's go ahead and find that first. I'm going to look at velocity at impact. All right, so if this is what we're using, then our initial point is still going to be over here, and our final point is down here right at impact. So what do we know? We actually know our displacement in y. Some students don't like the fact that it goes up and then comes back down, but remember displacement is just change in position. It doesn't matter if you go up and then down, our change in position is going to be 30 meters down. And since we made up positive, our displacement in y will be negative 30 meters. And that's okay because it knows that our initial velocity is up. So the equation knows we're going to go up first and then come back down. So that's okay. Initial velocity is, we calculated it before, 2.6 meters per second up. And of course, we know the acceleration due to gravity, once again, ay, which is down, so minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can calculate final velocity in y for that point then, right before we hit the ground at that displacement. And we'll use this equation, where final velocity in y squared is equal to initial velocity in y squared plus 2a delta d y. Now we don't need to rearrange this one, but we do need to take the square root of both sides. So we get final velocity in y is the square root. So we have 2.6 meters per second squared plus 2 times a, which is minus 9.8. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to be bad and leave out units, uh, times delta d, which is minus 30. And when we do that, we get a final velocity in y of 24.4 meters per second. Now, in this case, we took the square root. And so we do have a plus or minus possibility here. And we we're actually going to take the negative value because we know that final velocity is going to be down. Or I can just simply write down as my direction. So that's final velocity in y, 24.4 meters per second down. All right, but we also have an x component. Now the x component, the velocity is never going to change. We ignore air resistance in high school. And since gravity only works in a vertical component, the x velocity is not going to change. So we can go ahead over here and solve for our x component, vx using our cosine ratio is just going to be the hypotenuse times the cos of 10 degrees, which gives us an x component of 14.8 meters per second. All right, so let me redraw this triangle here. So we have our final velocity here. Then we have it as being the sum of its components, vx, and v final and y. So to then solve for our final velocity or our velocity at impact, we need to use Pythagorean theorem. And then we need to also find the angle theta. All right, so let's first solve for the hypotenuse. Let's go over here. So Vf using Pythagorean theorem is the square root of our x component. So 14.8 squared plus 24.4 squared, which gives us a final velocity or velocity at impact of 28.5 meters per second. But since I need to know velocity, I also need to know that 
angle. So we're going to take the tan ratio. So tan of theta is going to equal to opposite over adjacent. So 24.4 over adjacent, which is 14.8. And taking the inverse tan of both sides, we get theta to be 59 degrees. So we can finally say our final velocity is 28.5 meters per second. And we don't use north, east, south, and west because this is down, not south. So it's, we say 59 degrees below the horizontal.